EAA Chapter 166, Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV-12 build, and picking off the milestones with the RV-12 project, knee-deep in the airframe, laying electrical system harnesses, testing the fuel system, and wiring up the control sticks. Let's go over to the bench and look at those control sticks, and then we'll come on back to the airplane and talk to Mark Welch about the electrical system wiring. You know, in some airplanes, the control stick or control yoke interface wiring can be pretty complex, especially in airplanes that have a lot of avionics systems. Autopilot disconnect, comm radio transmit button, electric pitch trim switch, autopilot disconnect. It can get pretty busy with a lot of wires and a lot of switches. Luckily for the RV-12, it's pretty simple. There's just a push to talk switch for the pilot and co-pilot stick. Now, Van sends you two of these control sticks and they're pretty much ready to be connected to the airframe to the control surfaces. Now Vans doesn't include the grips in its uh, control sticks and instructions tell you to go to a cycle shop and pick out 7 8 inch handlebar grips and we picked out some nice ones, these leather uh, wraps that feel pretty good in hand and the interface was easy for installing the push to talk switch although it took a little bit of effort. Now the easy part is slipping the grip over the control stick and the tough part is routing the push to talk wiring through the control stick. As you can see here the uh, stick comes down makes a 90 degree turn and then there are two narrow channels on each side of this casting for routing the wires through. What worked for us was using a piece of lacing cord to send through the stick. Safety wire would work even better and once the lacing cord or safety wire is routed through to the other side now you can attach the push to talk wiring to the top and snake it through. Now the push to talk switches come pre-wired. There's one for the pilot and one for the co-pilot stick and what you need to do is on the control uh, grip uh, you pull out these end caps and drill a quarter inch hole in the end cap to mount the push to talk switch. Once you've got the hole drilled and the push to talk switch mounted in the end cap simply stick it back into the grip and there's your grip with push to talk switch. Now once the sticks make it to the airplane you route the two wire push to talk harnesses through the snap bushings in the seat rib Strip the end of the switch wires, one wire is ground and the other is key. Crimp on some ring terminals and connect them to the ground and also to the main fuselage harness. So we're starting uh, section 31B, which is the fuselage wiring harnesses. Uh, it entails putting in some of the basic wiring components uh, that will eventually f interface with the uh, avionics package that you eventually purchase, because you can choose either a Dynon or a Garmin type of system. And what Vans has done is they've provided a control module um, or basic hub, if you will, that's uh, mounted on the um, instrumentation shelf. And uh, this is common with both the um, Garmin system as well as the Dynon. And these wiring harnesses that you see starting to go in now will plug into that and then those are routed through the um, basic tunnel area to the various areas within the airplane. Uh, for instance, uh, it goes to the back, to the magnetometer, to the trim system for the um, horizontal stabilizer. It runs out to the, um, the wing connections here and it basically provides the pathway for all of these um, components that are controlled through the avionic system up in the front. Uh, so it involves both a basic harness and then another options harness uh, and if you choose to do things like autopilot and stuff like that. So right now we've got it coming from the avionic shelf. It's routed down through underneath the um, uh, or above the uh, rudder pedal system down into the tunnel and we're presently routing it through the uh, rest of the center tunnel. Uh, we're installing grommets at each of the uh, ribs as we work our way through so that uh, all of the components, uh, there's no chafing and things like that. Uh, so that's presently where we're at. Uh, we've chosen to go with a Garmin system so we've looked ahead and there's, a, there's an entire 
system that um, they provide later on for the Garmin G3X system. And uh, you'll eventually plug both these components into this control module as well as all the avionics uh, once we get to that phase. Uh, we presently, for our build, we've just ordered it and it's supposedly going to be here in a few months. So this is good timing for us to, to put this uh, uh, system together. So in addition to the um, harness wiring and so forth, there's uh, other components such as the um, antenna wiring. Basically, it all comes prefabricated uh, with VNC connectors, and uh, they even come uh, with uh, red markers on them so they know how much leads to leave for each of the various components, such as the GPS. Another component we installed is a, uh, essentially it's a telephone jack, but basically it is the uh, connection between the uh, ELT to the main switch on the panel. Um, uh, once we've got some of this harness wire in, now we're starting to pick up wiring that was done before for like the trim uh, motors and things. They're coming up to this harness and then we have to pin them out before we finish this off. If you notice the options one is already uh, completed and has its uh, you know, shell on it. We have to pin some of the wires from the trim motors and so forth to our main hub here and then we'll uh, complete that um, you know, shell cover for it. So another component that we just installed are the uh, cooling fans. Basically, there's uh, two small, uh, you know, muffin com computer type fans. One is drawing air into the avionics area and the other one is pulling it out. So those have been installed as part of this uh, phase as well. Uh, we've pretty much completed the brake system and the fuel system within the um, uh, fuselage area and we're presently leak testing those things uh, in order to make sure that we don't have any leaks because we don't want to have to go back in these areas afterwards, especially with all this wiring in, in place. So as an initial process for testing both the uh, fuel system and the brake system, uh, we're using a similar method to uh, testing the fuel tanks that we're uh, closing up all the openings, we're putting balloons on the end of both runs, and we're pressurizing the system uh, to see if the, the balloons hold so that uh, we can detect any leaks and then running soapy water over all the connections to see if we can find any problems. So once we've completed all the uh, wiring and the uh, harnesses that we can in the fuselage, the next step is to move on to uh, the lighting, which basically entails uh, cutting in a landing light into one of the wings and uh, running the navigation lights uh, in the tips of both wings and then making those connections back to the fuselage. 